Hey y'all, happy Tuesday afternoon. Excuse the hair, it's kind of humid and raining outside. I need a haircut anyway. Got to see things. <laughs> hey, it was a crazy week around here. Uh, let's see what was up this past week. This is Garden Tour Holy Week Part 1. We'll pick it up later. <laughs> Saturday was supposed to be a big work day for me. Got out there at 9 o'clock, a little late for me. Um, it decided to rain. So, had a little delay today as it decided to bust loose. Got a bunch of rain. Uh, yeah, well, there you go. But I did a little more weeding, but you can see it's a mucky mess. See how filthy my mat is. Anyway, those old okra canes, there they be. Strapped up, ready to roll. Looks like we'll put seven climbers and a couple of bush there of cucumber. And then over there, uh, probably about eight climbers, something like that, a few bush. I haven't decided yet. I may just jam it in there, but then you get all the moisture and fungus issues and all that kind of thing. But eight should be plenty. And yes, we're gonna to try to get up in that tree again this year. Why not? What the hey? Ain't nothing but a thing. Anyway. So I got this outside tacked down today before the storm. Uneven as it can be, but I don't care. I went ahead and finished this pass up so I have a dry place to walk, which was just in time today. I was giving uh, Voonchild a hard time on the phone saying, uh, storm's coming your way. Y'all gonna get slammed. And no sooner to say that, I'm looking at the sky, y'all. You know, I'm talking to her. I'm looking at the sky. I'm looking at the clouds go north. And them clouds stopped and they came right back. <laughs> flash, bang, boom, lightning's hitting like within a mile, like flash, bam, flash, bam. I'm hustling to get all this stuff in. So, I did not get to finish what I wanted to do today, which was clear all of this out and get ready for my warm season crops. But that's all right. Got a little something going. And it's gonna be pretty nice. After that rainstorm, I had a little visitor. Yeah, so uh, Sunday, I uh, was Palm Sunday. And um, I just didn't want to work on Palm Sunday. Plus, windy and raining. Um, even if it was Saturday, it still would have been a hard day to work. Uh, but here's a little tour of what's been going on here. Oh, the winds of March. Hey, got the hen bit stuff down in here. All right, all right. Hey, check that out. The peonies. Yeah, they'll be up and bloomed in April. I'm going to go in there and get that chickweed out. This bed has been neglected this spring because I'm busy. This is Palm Sunday. Peace of Christ. I'm not doing any work today. And yesterday was pretty much a washout, so got behind by a weekend. Oh, this is just kind of hanging. Although the seedlings are coming up for the 
Green's grocery store we got going on over here. Yes, sir. Oh, look at that fescue up there. Yeah, and that's been neglected. I got to get on that. I would work today, but it is Palm Sunday, so I'm just going to think and reflect. Of course, I guess by the time you're watching this, we're in the middle of Holy Week, but right now as I'm shooting it, it is Palm Sunday. The grass needed to be cut this weekend. That did not happen. I don't want to gunk up my mower with all that wet grass because then I'd have to spend time getting all that crap off the mower <clears throat> I could cut it with my battle axe because I don't really care what happens to that mower well let me tell you show you a big disappointment you've probably already seen it since I do this stuff in order but I so wanted to get this knocked out yesterday and just did not happen but I end it with this check this out Yep, I was on the phone with a fellow gardener and I said, hold on, I had to take a picture of this. Was it concerned? Um, but by having my eyes in the phone and whatnot, I couldn't get a look at its head. By the time I got close, it had its head down in the grass there. But I think it was just a guard snake. I don't think it was a copperhead. Didn't seem to be. A little more gray. Uh, the body was a little more gray, so it's all cool. And then I wanted to get, anyway, I wanted to get all this stuff up, put some leaf over the top, and try to keep that stuff from recompacting a little bit. But that did not happen, so I'll be back in here this week. Not today. It's Palm Sunday. Did I mention that? And all the balloons have come off. If you've been following me on Instagram, go check out my photos of this plum tree. If you haven't been following on Instagram, still, go check out the photos of this plum tree. I kind of got it when it was in full white, and then when it started turning peak, and now it's all dropped. The local domestic pollinators were coming in, thinking about getting me a bee house. And they're like birdhouses, but they're for bees, native bees, not honeybees. So, uh, yeah, drop me a comment down there and let me know what you think about that. I'm not sure if I need to or not, because we get a lot of native bees anyway. And I need to thin that radish. Now, that I might do. That's not really work. That's just sitting down with a pair of scissors. And, yeah, I went ahead. My onion starts. I know next time start them a lot earlier because they just weren't ready. I put a few out, but they're no count. So I went ahead and bought a couple bundles for peanuts. Got some uh, sweet and some red in there. And I'll probably finish this bed with the sets I bought. And then the ones I'm starting from seed, I'll just interlace them around the garden with anything and everything other than beans and peas. If you didn't know that, you probably should not grow onions with beans and peas. Herbs are looking nice and healthy. And even add it. Hey, check this out. See that right there? Took that out of the ground from the front yard. That straight up mint. We keep the mint up front because mint's so darn invasive. Um, so we keep it isolated. It's the only thing we grow up there or that was the only thing we grew up there that was edible. Now we've added four dwarf cherries, which I'll show you in a second. They're probably going to run a pumpkin up there. I'll show you that too. This thing, if the tinker's wife is watching, if you can identify that without flowers, I would be most grateful. Um, that came in a wildflower pack, the same pack I got that Photosolotia. And obviously it's a perennial because it came back. Unless that's some jacked up weed, whatever a weed is. <laughs> but yeah, I yanked that out of a whiskey barrel and uh, slapped it in like a, it looks like about a six inch container, six inch diameter. 
and it looked all like I'm gonna die and then it popped right back we got a boatload of rain we're up over uh, six inches now after yesterday I think I shot that rain gauge yesterday we picked up another three-eighths over the uh, night so yeah we're slamming in some rain this month which is a good thing I think I had this in last week's video all right now warning warning you are watching Jules small gardening if you have not followed for a while you know Jules will try anything 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 so what am I going to do here? That little iso pot, the bottom is busted out of it. So what I'm going to do is isolate probably a spaghetti squash, something. Some kind of winter vine, and I'm going to try to get it to run in this bed after I clean it up. And then over there, I'll put two winter vines. I got some sweet meat and uh, spaghetti. I think I'll skip the neck pumpkin this year. Um, we missed our spaghetti squash, so... I want to get about four spaghetti squash going and a couple of sweet meats and use as much of this area as I can. I'm just not sure how that stuff, you know, companion planting, uh, winter vines with uh, peonies, I don't know. I haven't found anything on that. If you know, let me know, because I don't want to waste my time uh, starting winter vines over here just to have the peonies have a negative effect on them. I do know, obviously, peonies attract ants. Now, it could be get good, could be bad, I don't know. So anyway, back to this whiskey barrel that's way past its prime. You can see that side of the wall is falling out. Ain't nothing I can do about it. Uh, I'm gonna put some winter squash in there and then ring around the rosy on a crescent moon it with silver queen corn. What? Uh, yeah, why not? What the heck? I know, I know, I know. It's too tight. Probably gonna have pollination problems. But my plan is to hand pollinate. Why not? What the heck? Nothing would go in this bucket but flowers anyway, so. Ain't nothing but a thing. Guys, tell me. Can I grow corn in that whiskey barrel? Drop them comments down there or in the live chat. Tell me what you think. I don't know. I'm gonna give it a shot. Why not? Got nothing to lose, really. Over there, I'm waiting to see how much of those uh, feather celosia come back. And the problem is, now I can see the chickweed. I know what chickweed looks like, but that was full of wildflower, and half of them were perennial. So I got to let all that stuff come up quite a bit before I know what's what. <laughs> I know what that is. Just another chore I still haven't gotten to. It's chickweed and hen bit. Uh, you can see a little better this week. Those are red giant mustards that was seed straight into the pot. And they're doing all right. I think there's eight now, eight coming up. That'd be plenty. And then, yeah, we've got peonies. I thought I got all the peonies out of here. And my uh, gardener at the nursery, she was not happy with me for pulling these things because they've been here for a quarter of a century at least. And it takes forever to get peonies going. And I told her, I said, I seriously doubt they won't come back. And they are coming back. Not in the same amount. Where is that thing? There it is. I mean, obviously, they're not as uh, prolific as it was. As I pulled quite a bit out. But I figured I couldn't get all of it because this stuff is thick. Anyway, you can see what I got to get done over here. But again, it's Palm Sunday. I just turned the camera off and it's spitting rain again. So obviously nobody's come to help me the last few weekends to stand this thing up. I just need four adults. I got two. I need two more. I still can't believe they said two people to put that together. That is just not right. All right. I got to go over there and shut that shed door. I got to tell you though, last night uh, I was sitting out the drive pad and uh, I was looking at the clouds move north and turn around. I mean, good gosh, man. Um, I was running from over here 
fast as I could in my garden boots. I was running to catch that door. And I got two flashbangs between that dry pad and that door. And I'm talking like light and up the sky. But bam! I mean, they were pretty close. And then once I got the door shut, I'm run back over here to jump on this porch as quick as possible. And it was one more. So I had three flashbangs there. <clears throat> That would have been a darn shame to get hit by lightning just to shut that door. But I do have fertilizer in there and I didn't want it to get wet. <laughs> so I got to do it again. At least it's not lightning. Oh, yeah, back to the dining room. Um, Mater's hanging in there. This one went down. I was harding them off and uh, it was a windy day. It wasn't that windy. Came out and snapped that thing and I could have retucked it in. I just tossed it. I got plenty and plenty of more seed. And typically I pull this shade all the way up, but there's not going to be any more sun today, so it just doesn't really matter. And these are broccoli. Those are actually an individual peat pots, and I up planted them to this planter. <clears throat> and then we'll get them in the ground eventually. And that's some more cabbage. That's storage F1. Yeah, uh, up front, I'm gonna try uh, growing pumpkin. Well, watch and tell me. Again, leave comments, tell me. You think this is worth even messing with? In the front yard. Lots to do. I gotta get that ivy out. My big white azalea is starting to bloom. Down in there is where the mint is, but I need to clean that up. But yeah, you can see I've got four of these guys. They're dwarf uh, cherry bushes, not trees. All right, two on each side. Sorry for the dizziness. The two on each side. They're supposed to get six by six. If you look out in the distance there, that's for Sistia. And all the yellow blooms are gone on that. But the photos I've seen, it's supposed to grow kind of like that. And then it would be full of white blooms. So, anyway, right in there, you tell me. I think I'm gonna try growing pumpkin in a grow bag. 10 gallon grow bag. And try to keep it contained in that bed. Is that possible? Give me some comments. Please, help, help me, help me. Uh, sorry again for getting you dizzy. We'll probably get another storm today. Why not? We've already had six inches. Give us another inch. Might as well. Yeah, well, it was kind of a slow week. I did get, let me look at the bolt chart here. Um, 22nd of March, which would have been what? Monday? Yeah, Monday. Starts a marginal and oregano. Three, three inch pots, six and two inch pots. So. They were up in like five days, so they're good to go. Uh, and then we'll, uh, they're in those uh, peat pots, so I don't know, I might say, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but they're started. Uh, 26th of March, Friday, <clears throat> put some stevia. Everybody's telling me, get stevia, slate, get stevia. So, okay, I got some stevia. So I tossed a bunch of uh, seeds in a big old container out in the container garden, straight up, boom, right outside. And then watercress in the container. Watercress, I learned last year, does not like direct sun. It just kind of fries it out. Plus, it's going to kind of keep secession planted anyway. It comes up, clip it. Next comes up, clip it. So, got some of that started. Uh, sunflower. Sunflower seed from Highland Homestead, Miss Eva. Uh, she sent me a giant and a mini. So, I put Let's see, two giants and two minis, and I'm gonna put that beside my garage and see what happens. 
uh, and then the 27th Saturday, right, it started raining and whatnot. So, well, let me go look and see what I can start. So I did a spaghetti squash, put six and three inch things. Here's the thing. We had an organic squash to come in. Two of them had already started to germinate in the belly of the squash. So grab those two and four more. So I've got uh, six of those going. Started a couple of sweet meats. Um, let me give that a shot. That's a winter squash, sweet meat winter squash. Two of those and three inch. And then I got my zucchini running. I got uh, dark green and eight ball zucchini that the Gypsy Vanilla Gorilla sent me. Uh, and then patty pan. I put two and three inches. Patty pan is a southern states seed that um, is 2013 packaging, eight year old packaging. So I squared that one up and two squared it just to make sure. Well, not to make sure, but to give it a better chance, I guess you'd say. I don't know if they're going to come up or not. <clears throat> Had them for eight years. Who knows? I don't know. Anyway, it's the middle of Holy Week now. It's Tuesday. Uh, if I don't see you guys before then, if I don't see you till next Tuesday, I hope everybody has a great Easter. Thanks for popping in here and chatting with me on this Tuesday. And uh, we will be back uh, Friday, Good Friday. We will have our show. Keep in mind, that show is moving to 8 o'clock now because of the sun shift. People are staying up later, staying outside later. So we're going to start running our podcast at 8 p.m. on Fridays. And it's the first Friday in April. However, uh, Ms. Craig's family homestead is indisposed. So we're going to have a special guest as a replacement for Craig's family homestead Friday. But it is, what should you be doing in the spring quarter for your vegetable garden? Three, two, one. Peace, y'all.